Dante's Divine Comedy Inferno by Dante Alighieri Canto 2 The Descent Dante's Protest and Virgil's Appeal The Intercession of the Three Ladies, Benedite The end of the day has come, and Dante is having doubts. He does not feel worthy enough to undertake his journey. Virgil accuses him of cowardice and tells of how the Virgin Mary turned to St. Lucia, who in turn asked for Beatrice, Dante's love, to go down into limbo where Virgil resides. There, Beatrice, with voice angelical, asked Virgil to assist Dante, whose way was impeded. At this, Dante is heartened and declares to Virgil that one sole will is in us both. Day was departing, and the embrowned air released the animals that are on earth from their fatigues, and I, the only one, made myself ready to sustain the war, both of the way and likewise of the woe, which memory that errs not shall retrace. O muses, O high genius, now assist me, O memory that didst write down what I saw, here thy nobility shall be manifest. And I began, Poet, who guidest me, regard my manhood if it be sufficient, ere to the arduous pass thou dost confide me. Thou sayest that of Silvius the parent, while yet corruptible, unto the world immortal went, and was there bodily. But if the adversary of all evil was courteous, thinking of the high effect that issue would from him, and who, and what, to men of intellect unmeet, it seems not, for he was of great Rome, and of her empire, in the imperial heaven, as father chosen. The which, and what, wishing to speak the truth, were established as the holy place, wherein sits the successor of the greatest Peter. Upon this journey, whence thou givest him vaunt, things did he hear, which the occasion were, both of his victory, and the papal mantle. Thither went afterwards the chosen vessel, to bring back comfort thence unto that faith, which of salvation's way is the beginning. But I, why thither come, or who concedes it? I not Aeneas am, I am not Paul, nor I, nor others think me worthy of it. Therefore, if I resign myself to come, I fear the coming may be ill-advised. Thou art wise, and knowest better than I speak. And as he is, who unwills what he willed, and by new thoughts doth his intention change, so that from his design he quite withdraws, such I became upon that dark hillside. Because in thinking I consumed the emprise, which was so very prompt in the beginning. If I have well thy language understood, replied the shade of the magnanimous, thy soul attainted is with cowardice. Which many times a man encumbers so, it turns him back from honored enterprise, as false sight doth a beast when he is shy. That thou mayst free thee from this apprehension, I'll tell thee why I came, and what I heard at the first moment when I grieved for thee. Among those was I who are in suspense, and a fair saintly lady called to me, and such wise I besought her to command me. Her eyes were shining brighter than the star, and she began to say, gentle and low, with voice angelical, in her own language, O spirit courteous of Mantua, of whom the fame still in the world endures, and shall endure, long-lasting as the world. A friend of mine, and not the friend of fortune, upon the desert slope is so impeded upon his way that he has turned through terror, and may I fear already be so lost that I too late have risen to his succor from that which I have heard of him in heaven. Bestir thee now, and with thy speech ornate, and with what needful is for his release. Assist him so, that I may be consoled. Beatrice am I, who do bid thee go. I come from there where I would fain return. Love moved me, which compelleth me to speak, when I shall be in the presence of my Lord. Full often will I praise thee unto him. Then paused she, and thereafter I began. O lady of virtue, thou alone through whom the human race exceedeth all contained, 
within the heaven that has the lesser circles. So grateful unto me is thy commandment, to obey, if twere already done, were late, no farther needest thou ope to me thy wish. But the cause, tell me why thou dost not shun the here descending down into this center, from the vast place thou burnest to return to. Since thou wouldst fain so inwardly discern, briefly will I relate, she answered me, why I am not afraid to enter here. Of those things only should one be afraid, which have the power of doing others harm. Of the rest, no, because they are not fearful. God in his mercy created me that misery of yours attains me not, nor any flame assails me of this burning. A gentle lady is in heaven who grieves at this impediment to which I send thee, so that stern judgment there above is broken. In her entreaty she besought Lucia, and said, Thy faithful one now stands in need of thee, and unto thee I recommend him. Lucia, foe of all that cruel is, hastened away and came unto the place where I was sitting with the ancient Rachel. Beatrice, said she, the true praise of God, why succourest thou not him who loved thee so, for thee he issued from the vulgar herd? Dost thou not hear the pity of his plaint? Dost thou not see the death that combats him beside that flood where the ocean has no vaunt? Never were persons in the world so swift to work their weal and to escape their woe as I, after such words as these were uttered, came hither downward from my blessed seat, confiding in thy dignified discourse, which honors thee and those who have listened to it. After she thus had spoken unto me, weeping her shining eyes, she turned away, whereby she made me swifter in my coming. And unto thee I came, as she desired. I have delivered thee from that wild beast, which barred the beautiful mountain's short ascent. What is it, then? Why, why dost thou delay? Why is such baseness bedded in thy heart? Daring and hardihood, why hast thou not, seeing that three such ladies, Benedite, are caring for thee in the court of heaven, and so much good my speech doth promise thee? Even as the flowerets, by nocturnal chill, bowed down and closed, when the sun whitens them, uplift themselves all open on their stems, such I became, with my exhausted strength, and such good courage to my heart there coursed, that I began, like an intrepid person, O oh, she compassionate, who succored me, and courteous thou, who hast obeyed so soon the words of truth which she addressed to thee, thou hast my heart, so with desire disposed, to the adventure with these words of thine, that to my first intent I have returned. Now go, for one sole will is in us both, thou leader, and thou lord, and master thou. Thus said I to him, and when he had moved, I entered on the deep and savage way. Good afternoon, my dear viewers, and welcome once again to Pangolin Reading, and the second video in my Divine Comedy series, written by Dante Alighieri. I apologize, I know it's been quite a while since my last upload. I had a lot of work I needed to take care of before I could get back into this nice little passion project of mine. And then, of course, even after I got most of my work done, I fell into the deadly sin of comfort. And basically, to simplify, it meant once I wasn't working on videos anymore, I didn't really want to get back into it. But of course, I had to get over it sometime, and so here we are. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, leave any comments, critiques, or praises in the comments section. It all goes a long way. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you would like, you know, to see any more videos of this type of quality. Thank you once again for taking the time to listen, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Take care, and have a wonderful day.